Starts off with Kyla Pratt and young Omar Epps playing basketball. Kyla Pratt just moved in next door. She pretty nice at basketball or whatever. That pisses young Omar Epps the fuck off for some reason. This nigga hate women. Girls can't play no ball. What a dog. She heard you. Nuh uh. She can only hear dog Get on! Oh, Pratt starts busting this nigga ass a little bit. These niggas put the girl and the short nigga on a team together and now they're getting smoked. That's fucking karma. Girls can't play no ball. <laughs> this nigga is way too old to be hitting girls, bro. He should know better than that. This nigga trips. Weapon, 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 weapon. <laughs> anyway, it's okay. Carla Pratt is okay. Everybody's okay in basketball. This was terribly nice of you, Nona. Oh, girl, don't worry about it. It's the least I could do. And I love to cook. You do? So how come you can play basketball? I just can. Well, if anybody messes with you, just let me know. Because I run the street. Why no karate from Almighty Isis? Young Omar Epps sees Kyla Pratt in the window that night, and he realized he like her now. He probably beat his meat or something to her. He probably that age, right? He looks about that age. Who knows? It's different for everybody. Let's move on though. It's weird I said that. Young Omar Epps gotta walk Kyla Pratt to school the next morning as an apology. She comes out the house and he is mesmerized by how beautiful she is with her fucking dookie plaits oh in her my hair. My fucking Snoop Dogg plaits. Major props to these child actors, by the way. This is the most believable, awkward little kid romance ever. You wanna be my girl? What do I have to do? Ride to school together. When you get mad at me, I gotta give you flowers. But I don't like flowers. I think we gotta kiss now. For how long? Five seconds? They kiss and they like each other now. They have a pretty good relationship for a few seconds. Cause you my girl now, you gotta ride on my bike. I don't have to do what you say. Weapon, weapon, weapon. I don't wanna be your boyfriend anymore, you ugly dog. Shit. It's the second quarter now, and they in high school. You see what they doing? They was kids in the first quarter. Their relationship, a basketball game. It's actually kind of cool. I kind of like it. Young Omar Epps turns into regular Omar Epps, which regular Omar Epps is way too old to be playing a high school nigga at this point. This nigga was legit 27 when they filmed this shit. Anyway, he getting bitches, and he a star athlete. Everybody love him, and I wish I was him. Kyla Pratt evolves into Sanaa Lathan, and she a star athlete also, except everybody fucking hate her and treat her like garbage for some reason. They be calling her a lesbian and roasting her ponytail and shit. It's very sad in basketball. You would be pretty if you do something to your head. You know your hair looks really cute like that. Gabrielle Union is here in the movie. She plays that standard mean girl thought type of character and she's trying to get Omar Epps to go to the dance with her. You know who Q's asking to the spring dance? Nope. Well, can you give him this for me, please? Look at that booty. I just wanna let the sweat off. Omar Epps gives Sanaa Lathan a ride home after his game or somebody game. Somebody's playing basketball. Omar Epps and Sanaa Lathan are best friends and shit. They very close and shit. Sanaa Lathan is obviously in love with this nigga, but he gets so much ass he don't even give a fuck. Plus she got confidence issues or whatever it looks like. The only thing keeping her down really is this fucking dry ass ponytail. Seriously bitch, that shit is very easily fixable. Like I know she hooped and it's convenient to do the ponytail, but don't be crying about not getting niggas if that's the case. You're not even trying. What's that? Some no Shawnee Easton told me to give you. The big ass titties. Hey, give it here. Let me take you to the spring dance and I promise I'll leave you satisfied. <laughs> Omar Epps goes home and his parents are fighting as usual. His dad is a retired basketball player. He's also the Allstate nigga in real life. He was in Waiting to Exhale. I don't know this nigga name. I could have looked it up. It don't matter though. He a Allstate. I mean, All-Star. Omar Epps' mom is upset because the Allstate nigga not selling enough insurance or some shit. You no, know, I came second to the NBA. I'm not about to come second in no bullshit scouting job. I didn't mean it like that. I like my bullshit job, okay? We got just enough savings to keep your fine ass in Gucci and go. 
I'm gonna eat nice and hot. They're getting ready for this school dance and Sanaa Lathan glowed up now. Her mom, Alfre Woodard, comes in and makes a big deal about how beautiful she is, which is nice because she's usually the main one roasting her and shit. Also, Alfre Woodard, she an all-star. I just want you to enjoy being beautiful. So now Lathan ends up going to the dance with Boris Kojo. He's a college nigga or whatever at this high school dance. That's kind of not cool. So tell me what I have to do to make you have a good time with me. Omar Epps brings Gabrielle Union to the dance and they both all stars. They all all stars. You are all star. Everybody all stars. Wait, except for this nigga. This nigga not no fucking all star. Get the fuck out of here, Boris Kojo. <laughs> Yo, look how bad. You even. Damn, girl, I didn't know Nike made dresses. Omar Epps staring at Sanaa Lathan, and he mesmerized by her beauty again. This nigga only care about her when she get her hair done, bro. Anybody else notice that? Both of their dates end badly, and they both come home early, and they both got accepted into the same college also. Then they reveal their love for each other. Then they have this incredibly long sex scene. It's so romantic, bro. There's so many romantic things happening right now on this particular night. You came out of your shell, and you beautiful, even though you was kind of shy or whatever. Shitty ponytail. The popular boy like you now. Also, he your childhood best friend. He like you now. That's two things. He was there for you the whole time. Popular, whatever, man. They at college now. So now Lathan at practice and all the other girls still picking on her and shit. Hey, see, you took her out. Girl, you need your mama. You need a hug. <laughs> Ain't no way some soft ass freshman is taking my spot. Uh. Omar Epps is here at college too, and everybody love him, of course. All the bitches still love him, and they all hate me. It's pretty unfair. Are you gonna take us to the final four? We'll see. I'll be watching. Hope so. You do see me standing here, right? I can't be nice to a fan. I hate to keep saying this, but everybody was treating you better when you lost the ponytail. You're being stubborn at this point. I know it's fucked up. I'm just saying, you see the type of girls this nigga goes for. I'm sure he's not crazy about the ponytail. <laughs> People saying I'm a definite lottery pick. <laughs> Quincy, give yourself time to develop. Besides, the sooner you go pro, the sooner you got to deal with the mess I'm dealing with. Well, there's this thing out there, this paternity suit. It's not true, is it? You need to hear me say it. I'll say it. It's not true. Omar Epps goes to see his mom, and she's looking all fucked up and sad. She upset about the Allstate nigga fucking around on her. She not in good hands. I'm sorry. I could have done a lot more with that. That good hands joke. I hired somebody. Ain't that pathetic? Man looked me in my eye, and he lied to me like it was nothing. Coach has us on 11 o'clock curfew. If I'm late, I don't suit up. I'm sweating. Will you call me when you get in? I'll stay up. Omar Epps is having some weird meltdown now. He's really mad about his dad and shit. He starts being mean to his girl and openly messing with other bitches. It's pretty savage. Hey. Hey, babe. You run at my game. I'm sorry. I had this meeting with this guy. Hi. Oh, Monica, this is Carrie. Carrie, this is Monica. I was about to go get some food. You wanna come? Is that Ebony from the Players Club? She looked pretty good, bro. Notice how she actually has her shit done and how it looks nice and it's practical. You can still play basketball with these. She's not just ignoring her shit and looking crazy and making her nigga deal with it. What is wrong with you? Get that shit the fuck out of here. No, but seriously, I feel for this girl. Their relationship has been very one-sided since the beginning. This nigga has never really treated her good. Yeah, they like rolled around in the grass and shit a little bit. This nigga has never really done anything romantic this whole time. He hasn't done nearly enough to win the audience over at all. This nigga a piece of shit. Maybe I'll come by later. 
Nah, I got curfew. I mean, what, whatever I did, we can fix this. I don't think so. Look, I'll see you around. Again, is this all because your dad cheated on your mom? I mean, the movie did need a reason for them to break up anyway, because you gotta do that. But this is a bad way to do that. It makes Omar Epstein kind of petty. One thing go wrong in this nigga life and he fucking turned evil and shit? I don't wanna be your boyfriend anymore, you ugly dog. Anyway, they break up. It's the fourth quarter now. It's years later. So now Lathan in Spain playing Spanish basketball. She figures out the ponytail situation, but it's way too late at this point. She's doing pretty good though. Everybody love her finally. She on posters and in commercials and shit. She watching, uh... Spanish Family Matters on TV. She got a great life. Omar Epps in the NBA now, and he's all grown up. You can tell because he got that fucking Mike Lowry goatee that everybody used to have. A fucking season five Martin goatee. Anyway, he plays for the Lakers, but he's like second string and he kind of trash it looks like. And here come the subs. And you know, it's nice to see the subs get a chance to play and the fans love it. Quincy's got the ball over in the corner, puts up a three pointer. That's no good. Quincy makes a steal. He's on his way, open court. <laughs> Omar Epps' dad visits him in the hospital. Omar Epps is still pretty mad at him. It's been like five years since they talked. That's kind of too much. Your dad was in the NBA, bro. Let him fuck random bitches. It's fine. It don't matter. No, I'm sure it sucks. I've never been in like a traditional family, but I'm sure it's tough. I'm sure divorce and whatever. I'm sure Omar Epps really... <sighs> no, fuck this shit, bro. This nigga gave you a great life. Look at your fucking life. Look at your childhood. It's all because of this nigga. It's not even a hood movie. You living great, nigga. What did your mom even do besides trap this nigga and buy enormous wigs with his money? It's not cool. I know. I'm sorry. But give this nigga a break, though, is what I'm saying. There's way trasher dads out there. How come you couldn't be the man you kept trying to make me? I just couldn't. And I thought this was going to be awkward. <laughs> I heard you were in Spain. I was. So now Lathan comes back to the U.S. and she actually fat as shit now that I'm looking at it. She looking a lot better now. It's a pretty good scene probably. She looking pretty good. Omar Epps' fiance shows up and her name is Tyra Banks. She's like a flight attendant or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea to be fucking with this nigga Omar Epps again, Tyra Banks. You remember what happened last time? So now Lathan is having a family drama also. She has this whole arc where her mom be roasting her and not going to her games. The fourth quarter stuff is all family drama stuff, really. You've seen it before. It's family drama movie. Here's a clip of it. Female superstar athlete whose mother is nothing but a housewife. That's not it. You never stood up for yourself. Ever. Home cooking and ironing his drawers. Stop playing with me, bitch. They have this very sad basketball montage now. So now Lathan give up basketball and she work at a bank now with her dad. His name is the nigga from the Matrix. Omar Epps is sad also for some reason because his leg or his dad, I don't know. He give up basketball too though. They both hate basketball now. Omar Epps goes back home and he runs into Sanaa Lathan. She wearing this fucking ugly ass Hillary Clinton suit. Her hair is looking pretty good though. So you know Omar Epps is paying attention again. Also, I'm just joking about her being terrible. Even with the ponytail, she's still pretty good. I was smash. I was trying to try something different. Like what? I'm thinking about going back to school. So why'd you give up ball? Why do you keep sweating me up? Because I don't get it. They talk about how they both gave up basketball and Omar Epps says he wants to go back to school. They both good at basketball and bad at love. You get it. Let's skip to the end now. What I'm trying to say is I've loved you since I was 11. And the shit won't go away. You wait two weeks before my wedding to tell me something like that. Better late than never. Right? Wrong. I'll play you. For what? Your heart. No, I really got the detail pick the team now, boy. Omar 
Omar Epps wins the game. Sanaa Lathan feeling real sad now, but Omar Epps was just joking. It turns out he really did love her the whole time, apparently. Tell me why. Double or nothing. They love each other now. It's a happy ending. They both basketballs now. So now Lathan in the WNBA, they have a daughter. Everybody happy in basketball, oh except poor Tyra Banks. She didn't do shit to nobody. She lost her fiance in a damn secret midnight basketball game. This must have been so random and devastating for her. This nigga treat women so badly. Why do they like this movie? Overall, Love and Basketball was a satisfying experience. The acting was good. The story was believable. It felt real. It focused on successful black people and it didn't like make a big ass deal out of it. There's a lot of good elements to the movie. I might be on my own here though, but I didn't really like Omar Epps' character in this. I know he's like a star athlete and there's supposed to be like some cockiness or arrogance type of thing with him, but it doesn't feel like he ever balanced it out with any redeeming moments and shit. Like what did he even do to make her like him besides live next door and be good at basketball? She's basically lady simping the whole movie and he never really met her halfway. Then again, I don't be paying attention, I be really high. I'm not a real movie critic, I don't know what I'm doing. The family drama stuff didn't really work for me either. I guess it's because I'm from the hood and their problems really did not seem all that serious to me. I mean, I understand most problems are relative and I'm still glad they're showing successful black people, but at the end of the day, these niggas have bread. Their lives are gonna be fine no matter what. There's really no stakes, it's not a hood movie. That's it, thanks for watching. I got some shirts now, I made some shirts. I got a sad hood movie shirt. That shit pretty clean, I got everything. I got other shirts. I got another music video overview coming for y'all. So much other stuff coming your way on YouTube. I'm branching out and shit. I'm working on other content to hold you guys over between the hood cinema shits. I got a podcast coming, reaction videos, all that shit probably. See you next time for more non-hood movies. Make sure you like and subscribe and basketball. And that's it. It's a- Come and eat nice and nice.